Hello everyone. Today I want to show you my new project using an Arduino Uno and an 809850 DDS. The credit for this project, basically the firmware and the schematic goes to Alpha Delta 7, Charlie Richard. His name is Richard. He, is, uh, he did the, the original uh, project and I saw it on YouTube and I thought okay why not try it out because he was kind enough to give the firmware to anybody that was interested in building that. Anyway essentially this project is part of an up, up, con, uh, up, up converting the transverter for using my old FT221 uh, that's the receiver and let me just turn it on so this is a uh, all mode uh, VHF base station built very well by ASU so it's working very well and I just thought why not use that to uh, receive HF and basically I need a stable oscillator that goes in steps of 1 megahertz um, so that I can use the FT221 as an IF so because of that I did not have the uh, step button outside on the panel it's uh, right there in the corner just be, uh, behind the encoder and just put it on a, uh, a scrap PCB which I had with me I put that and also the contrast control is on that board and you can see the Arduino board on uh, above that and uh, the, at the end of the box is the DDS chip, uh, DDS board rather. This I got it from Hong Kong. It's a good value for money. I was uh, initially a little doubtful, but then it's working very well. And later I'll also show you how the low pass filter works in that. And uh, the, that DDS, uh, we have provision, uh, we have two outputs, uh, output one and output two. And how they behave, I'll just show it to you. And as I said, uh, this project is ongoing and uh, you can see that the DC jack is left open and the BNC connector is also left open. That is where I'd like to connect the output of the DDS2 uh, using a coax. But for now, I have just connected it to an RCA uh, just for uh, testing. And this box is from an old HP, uh, whatever it was. I got it in junk and uh, <coughs> made of aluminum so I thought why not and all that extra space you see uh, is for the uh, transverter uh, I'd like to shield everything and then build I kept as much space and uh, the spaces used underneath the DDS board and the Arduino board that uh, they were available at uh, in my shack I used it it's a little long too long rather <coughs> but that is what I have and I like to use wire wrapping technique on this for uh, proto build. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is the wire wrapping tool for those uh, who have not used it. And this is the wire wrapping wire. So uh, it's very convenient. Uh, you can change as many times as you want. And uh, without using the sorting iron. And uh, in, even in the past I have used this technique and it has really helped me. It saves time and it works. There is no problem with that. So uh, let me just uh, lift the rig up a bit so that you can have a clear view of the front panel and the display. This is my makeshift stand and there you can see it is right now at 16 uh, megahertz, 16 and uh, I think there's also 50 hertz there anyway. So I'll show you how the output looks on the spectrum analyzer. So uh, there you see, you can al already see the output at 16 megahertz and uh, let me just bring it down to 2 megahertz, it's actually 1 megahertz, you can see it here in the DDS, it is 1 megahertz and the output is, you can't see it because I have set it a very high uh, scan rate so you can't see it here but let me just okay there you see it 
3 megahertz and the output is at minus 22 uh, dBm of course I have a 20 dB attenuator right now I'm using a 75 ohm impedance attenuator which was available I also have a homebrew attenuator but I thought it's best to use something commercial even though 75 ohm I think for this purpose it suits my uh, it suits my requirement at the moment and uh, so that's the output 22.4 dBm uh, so if you take away the 20 dB attenuation it's minus 2 dBm so that's the output at uh, 3 megahertz let me just increase the uh, frequency to the maximum you can see it's going in steps of 1 megahertz and uh, it is right now at 28 megahertz and the output is the output is minus 24 dBm and uh, that's the output and uh, is again uh, I have the 20 dB attenuator in line now the best part is if I increase the scan scanning uh, the width of the scan right now I'm scanning only from 1 to 40 megahertz it looks pretty clean and I have the uh, noise filter uh, in the spectrum analyzer which is switched on now let me just change this the scan width to Okay, this is the same thing I had and uh, let me go to okay so the scan width is from 1 to 300 megahertz and you can see a lot of spurs there and uh, basically this is the required if you can see the pointer this is the required frequency required output which is a 28 uh, megahertz and that goes that can I can, I can shift and what you see here is some spur I'm not able to figure out I'll have to calculate and see what output that is that is one plus this is the clock I believe it's at 125 megahertz and this is another spur here oh uh, yeah this is another spur this is I think the hor first harmonic of the first spur and this is again the second harmonic of the clock which is at uh, right now 250 megahertz now and this is the, uh, the second harmonic of the second spur and this output as I said the DDS controller has out 2 and out 1 uh, the board from Hong Kong and this is from out 1 this is from out 1 as you can see at the back the red wire is connected to the center pin and that's out 1 and I believe that doesn't have the low pass filter and that's the reason you see all that now I'll switch, o switch it over to out 2 and then you see the difference and there you see only the clock and its harmonic remains and the required frequency the other spur has gone just so that you know what, what happened I'll just connect it back and there you see the spurs there and uh, now back to this I think this is with the low pass filter so we have as I said uh, this is the second harmonic of the clock 250 megahertz first harmonic in fact it's not the first harmonic it is it is the actual clock uh, frequency and uh, the other one is the uh, first uh, harmonic and this is the required signal this is a required signal and I can also scan it to uh, 500 megahertz and it makes a uh, I think you can see the spurs here oh. that was a mistake I think it's not saved so let me go back to this one so this looks neat and tidy I'd like you to uh, see the waveform it looks pretty good actually on the oscilloscope let me just connect from the spectrum analyzer to the oscilloscope here and there let me switch off this light so 21 megahertz and 
okay now this is at 29 megahertz the output is pretty low in fact yeah, how much is the output it's uh, 50 millivolts per division and the oscilloscope is very old so I won't uh, take that calibration into consideration but just as a reference it is uh, three divisions approximately about uh, yeah almost three divisions at 50 millivolts per division and as I decrease the frequency it goes up so basically the response is not flat the output and it decrease the sensitivity and it goes beyond so this is at one one megahertz and I think the output is around one old one old peak to peak one two three four five yeah it's one old peak to peak at one megahertz and uh, so this is uh, the project and it's uh, ongoing uh, a lot of work involved uh, basically uh, I just want to use this 1 to 30 megahertz DDS output in steps of 1 megahertz heterodyned with uh, mixed with probably a 110 megahertz oscillator uh, that should give me pretty close uh, to uh, what I want um, to convert HF up convert HF into VHF so that I can receive it in my classic FT221. So I just want to thank uh, Richard Alpha Delta 7 Charlie once again for the great work he has done. Uh, very neatly uh, 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 written code with all uh, proper comments for others to understand and uh, in fact I'm new to Arduino and uh, because of uh, this project now I am uh, I know at least something to start with. So thank you for watching this video.